Hello everyone! In this video we are talking about education and learning school, college and university vocabulary. And I think it's impossible to give you this vocabulary without referring to the educational systems in the UK and the USA. In the UK children go to a nursery school or preschool at the age of three and at the age of five they start their compulsory education. Children finish secondary school at the age of 16 and then they choose between higher education or further education. In a university or any other type of higher educational establishment you study for a degree, while in a further educational institution you get a diploma or a certificate. A university degree shows that you have the academic background and a further education diploma or a certificate is the proof of a qualification that allows you to do certain jobs. What concerns compulsory education in the UK? There are independent schools, also known as public schools and state schools. Independent schools are fee-paying and selective, and state schools are open to all children. In the USA, children also go to a preschool at the age of three, but compulsory education age varies from state to state. However, most kids finish their high school at the age of 18, and then they begin to study for a degree or go to a vocational school. In American high schools and universities, when students are in their first year of studies, they are called freshmen, sophomores in the second year, juniors in their third year, and when they are in their final fourth year of studies, they are called seniors. But these words are not used in the UK. School premises include the school building, classrooms, the school gym, the hall, a canteen where students and pupils have their meals, a parking lot, there may be separate parking areas for students and teachers, a playground for small children and a playing field for older kids. A staff room for teachers, also sometimes called a teacher's lounge. A library. A chemistry or physics lab. And students can leave their clothes and other belongings in the lockers. And now let's look at jobs in a school. The most important job in a school is that of a teacher. The teacher who is in charge of the whole school is called the head teacher or headmaster, principal or director. There is also a deputy head teacher and there are heads of departments, for example, biology department or mathematics department. PE teacher stands for physical education teacher, RE is religious education, a learning support assistant helps the pupils and the teacher in a classroom, a caretaker looks after the school building and a librarian works in a school library. All school subjects are part of the school curriculum or the program of studies. There are science subjects such as physics, chemistry, biology or maths and arts or humanities such as history, geography, English or political science. In a classroom students or pupils solve math problems or do sums, divide, multiply, subtract or take, learn by heart, do projects, take quizzes, work in groups, write an essay, and for their performance students or pupils get grades and marks. Grades are usually numbers and letters, for example 1, 2, 3 or A, B, C, D and they are more popular in the USA. And marks are more typical of the UK and they are presented as a score, for example 70 out of 100. Students and pupils take their exams and if they are successful they pass them and if they are not they fail. In a British secondary school, pupils take their SATs, GCSE, AS levels and A levels exams. And I'm not going to explain what these examinations are about, because this is not the purpose of the video, we are just learning vocabulary. 
In American secondary schools, exams are different, it depends on the state, but if you want to enter a college or university, you will need SAT, not to be confused with the British SATs, and ACT. These are standardized exams. A prom party is a very important event for senior school kids. In the UK, it's organized for year 11 and year 13 students, and in the USA for seniors and sometimes for junior high students. It's all about fancy dresses and suits, and on that night they arrive for the party in a limousine with their dates. In the UK, you can apply to university or college through University and Colleges Admission Service. You need to choose your course, check entry requirements and course fees, fill out an application form, submit your application and then wait for the reply. Yes, there may be quite a lot of applicants for one place. Then you will receive an acceptance or non-acceptance letter. In the USA, you can first research your options through College Navigator, then check admission requirements and verify your credentials, finance your studies, it can be self-funded or through scholarships and grants, then take standardized tests and TOEFL if needed, and then submit your application or apply for admission. It's important to know from the very start how you're going to finance your studies. If you don't have enough of your own money to pay your tuition fees, you can either apply for a scholarship or grant or take out the loan from the bank, but you should understand that it may take quite a long time to pay off the loan. If you are admitted to university, you become a student and you can say that you have entered or got in a university. In the UK, they often call university a uni, and in the USA, just a school. As a student, you must enroll into a course or get into a course, for example, to get into a course in business administration. There are a lot of different facilities on the university campus, such as lecture halls, student centers, dining halls or canteens, the place where students live is called residence halls or hall of residence in the USA, it's also called dormitory or dorm, libraries. The students who are taking their first four-year course of studies at university are called undergraduate students. And as I said before, in the USA there are special words for such students depending on the year of studies. Those who wish to obtain their master's or PhD degrees continue their education and become graduate and postgraduate students. In a university you do or study for a degree in, for example, mathematics, physics, English, etc. And when you graduate you receive, get, earn or obtain a degree, and it could be with honors but outstanding merits. A bachelor's degree is awarded after the first four-year course of studies, the next level is master's, and the highest degree is doctoral or doctor's degree, which is also known as PhD. University personnel or faculty includes a tutor, a teacher who works individually or in a small group, lecturers, professors, associate professors and researchers. The one who is in charge of the whole department is called department chair or dean, and president or principal chancellor is in charge of the whole university. There are also advisors of studies and supervisors. All university courses are organized into the curriculum and each course has its own syllabus. So what is the difference between the words? The curriculum is a list of subjects in a course or a school and it's also a set of learning goals structured in a certain way, while the syllabus is set for a particular subject in the course and it lists the topics covered in the course of study. A student's main course is called a major and it's also used as a verb, for example, to major in history or in languages. There are required courses and optional courses. Required courses are also known as obligatory, core courses, mandatory or general education courses. Students must take these courses anyway, and the optional courses are called electives in the USA and options in the UK. Students attend, have, go to lectures and seminars, laboratory courses, tutorials and colloquiums. A tutorial is an individual class of a tutor with a student, and a colloquium is a conference, a type of conference, in the question and answer format. In a seminar, a teacher is usually called a seminar leader, and students collaborating together are called peers. There are different types of academic writing. Students write papers, essays, a longer format is theses. They also work on course papers, coursework, and the longest and the most difficult format is a dissertation. Tutors and teachers assign, collect, check and hand out the works of students and they also give their feedback on the works. And students write, submit or hand in their works. 
So in the course of their studies, students make or do notes, they can also borrow notes from their peers, they do the reading in the library, they may give a presentation or work in groups, they take part in discussions, and teachers give lectures, give handouts, lead seminars and give assignments. When students don't attend their classes and lectures for some reason, we say that they are absent. For example, he was absent from school too often. Another word is truant, which is used as an adjective, part of a phrase or a verb. For example, truant children usually have problems with exams. He often played truant and just stayed at home. He has been truanting for three days by now. And one more word is the word skip. For example, he skipped his English lesson and went to the cinema. There are different types of school punishment for students. A reprimand is a verbal or written statement of disapproval. A detention is making a pupil or student stay in a particular area at school for a certain period of time. Suspension is temporary exclusion from a course or a school. And expulsion is permanent exclusion. There are different types of voluntary break from studies or withdrawal. For example, a gap year is typically a year-long break taken by a student, usually between school and university. A leave of absence is temporal withdrawal from studies due to illness, bereavement, financial hardships or personal issues. And to drop out means to voluntarily stop doing classes before finishing a course or graduation. Words and phrases associated with exams. A term is a period of instruction before the exams. Exam week is the most stressful time for students cramped with exams and tests. There are midterm, end of term, end of year and final exams, also known as finals. A makeup examination is allowed when a student couldn't attend the actual exam for good reasons. There are also essay exams, multiple choice exams, an open book examination test your ability to work with materials at hand. There are also take home exams, problem or case based exams, oral exams. A cumulative exam tests a student on all the materials since the beginning of the term, and a comprehensive exam focuses on the general knowledge of a student. And in a pass fail exam, you don't get any mark or grade. A revision period is also a very stressful time for students and they say revise for an exam in the UK and review for an exam in the USA. And when the revision is over, they go and take their exam. And another phrase for that is sit an exam or sit for an exam. And if a student succeeds, he or she does well in the exam or passes the exam. Other phrases are pass with flying colors, sail through exams. And if they are not so successful, we say that students do badly or fail an exam. And if students copy the answers, they cheat in exams or tests. And after the failure, students must retake or recede their examinations. This video has turned out to be quite long, but I hope you watched it to the end. If you find it useful, please drop me a like and subscribe to my channel.